Silent Wings uh, started about four years ago. A fellow film filmmaker had brought it to me, um, and he had started it actually in 1996, believe it or not. And when he brought it to me, he was sort of at the end of where he could take it. He said, I've, I've got this, and I know you've done other productions for PBS especially. And he said, I just want to get it out there. I just want to do it for the guys. And I viewed what he had. He had the interviews with Walter Cronkite and Andy Rooney and the veterans. And I watched it, and I, I said, this stuff is amazing. This is a great story. And it was a story that had to be told. And I smiled because when you, you know, Hollywood always says, it's the story that had to be told. And most of the time, you know, it's not. <laughs> but this is a story that had to be told because the majority of Americans, especially people that served in World War II, knew nothing about, um, don't know anything about the glider pilots. With this other filmmaker that had brought it to me, Basically, I had a pile of stuff. I had interviews on tape. I had scraps of paper with phone numbers. Uh, there was no script. Uh, there was no trailer. There was no nothing. It was like taking a big pile of stuff and making something out of it, which was fun. I, um, I looked at it as a story that um, would take a lot of work, obviously, to you know, bring into a cohesive format, but I really felt like I wanted to tell it. My Lincoln and Lee film was being released at the end of January 2006, and I said, well, Silent Wings is still here, and I think it's, of anything that I take on next to finish, this is the film, because I put so much effort into it. And I, I had, what had prompted me, the final, I guess the final um, um, element that prompted me to say, okay, this is it, I'm finishing this film, is I read um, that Walter Cronkite was turning 90 years old in 2006. And I said, everyone, you know, everyone in this film is aging. The population is aging, the veterans are, you know, tragically dying off um, so many each year that the audience for this film is dwindling. Although I think everyone will enjoy it, I just wanted to finish it for the people that are still here. I'm exceedingly proud of the production. It it's even more it, it's even more than I thought it would be when I when I embarked on it. Um, I'm just exceedingly proud of it. And um, it, it tells the story and um, gives these veterans their due, which is long overdue. I think what I've enjoyed most about uh, finishing Silent Wings is collaboration. And documentary filmmakers and any filmmakers know that uh, any directors know it's a pretty lonely craft and um, you have your high moments and your low moments and uh, if you have surrounded yourself with a uh, with not a support staff but but people that want to see your you know your vision realize as much as you do and take a a real active stake in it that's what I enjoyed the most. Um, the collaboration has been, for me, just a thrill. Uh, Brian McDonald is the editor of Silent Wings, and in my estimation, he's one of the best editors in New York. And what makes him so, so good and what he brought to the project is his interest in World War II. And uh, he himself has visited Normandy three times, and he's a walking encyclopedia of World War II. And when I first approached him about working with this project, it was synchronicity. He had been looking to do a history project for a long time. And to have 
uh, a project like this where it covers all of World War II. He just dove right in and brought his best work to bear. There are portions in the film where they don't look like a, what you would see on, say, a cable channel um, as a World War II documentary, especially Normandy, where we let the planes take off and breathe and they just keep taking off and the music builds and you as a viewer and this is through the creative decisions that Brian and I have made you feel like you're going across the channel in all the battle sequences the way they're edited uh, cinematically you feel like you're in the middle of the battle and it, it was intentional because we didn't want too much narration we wanted that feel that cinematic feeling of bringing you there, bringing you across the channel with the glider pilots. And that collaboration with the edit side of things really was tremendous. Uh, the audio house in Philadelphia, Audio Post, uh, Scott Waz uh, firm in, in Philadelphia is one of the best audio sound design firms around. They've worked on several features, uh, including some of M. Night Shalaman's features. Um, and I had pushed hard to have sound design work on this film. And it just so happens, another synchronicity part, that the main audio designer on Silent Winds is a man by the name of David McGarry. And he, uh, working with Audio Post, working for Audio Post, um, is the man who was responsible for all the audio design and audio sound of the Brothers in Arms PC games. So he brought <laughs> an incredible amount of technical knowledge as well as knowledge of World War II sounds to Silent Wings. He even corrected some placeholder sounds we had in the soundtrack. And um, he, he joking, he had left the, um, the company that had produced Brothers in Arms, uh, Gearbox Software and he had taken a position with uh, Audio Post in Philadelphia. And the first time that I met him, he said, I thought I'd left World War II behind. And I said, well, why is that, Dave? He says, I just spent the last three years with all the brothers in arms at <laughs> PC Games. And I said, well, their loss is our gain. <laughs> so, so I've just been thrilled uh, about what he's brought to the project. And I can say with much confidence that you will not hear a more accurate World War II documentary in the marketplace. The sound effects, they're absolutely the best. And um, to give you a little insight to the sound of Silent Wings, there is more than 100 audio tracks in the final mix. Um, it's just incredible. Um, and it's all in surround sound that they've designed. So when you watch the DVD at home, as you're watching this DVD, you're surrounded by the battle. The explosions are accurate. The planes fly right over your head. I mean, we really are fortunate to have David and Audio Post um, working on this project, who worked on this project. So I, I'm, I'm just thrilled and tickled, as you can tell, that they, they brought such skill to the audio side of this um, program.